Hello and welcome back to Cemetery Mary. On the last episode, we spent our time with Reginald heading to the hardware store. Uh, and now I believe we're on his way to his house. No, not his house, his, his workshop. Because he's going to show us how a uh, coffin is made. Um, I have no idea how this is going to progress since. Reginald has kind of had the least amount of story with regards to uh, Croven and Twyla. Well, especially um, Croven. But, uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. There were so many trees here. Oh, so many trees building uh, buildings. Can't even read the first line. There were so many trees. And buildings. There were so many trees, and buildings were spread. So spread. Jesus Christ. The grass grew in such a way that I didn't feel it didn't feel overgrown, despite reaching uh, what's above my ankles. I walked down the town's cracked sidewalk until I came across a pebble path, and following it down, I caught the sight of Reginald's workshop. It was so old-fashioned. It was big and completely made of wood. It almost looked like its own little cottage way out here. But it was charming. I liked it. Went to the door and gave it a, a few gentle knocks. I didn't hear anything at first, but then... Reginald opened the door. At first, he had a not-so-happy expression on his face. It was only a split second before I noticed... It before it, it changed. That's not a very good sign. Ah, uh, Mary, you're here. Come in, I come in. So glad you can make it. I took steps into the workshop. It was so cozy in here. There's such gentle sun sunlight flowing through the window and the smell of sawdust was prominent in the air but it was a good kind of sawdust smell it smelled like productivity and hard work I actually just started my break but you're free to look around and ask about things in the meantime in the meantime are you sure I don't want to bother you on your break oh nonsense I can't think of a better way to spend my free time I mean, bothering someone on their break is better than distracting them while they're working, correct? I mean, sure, I could stress them out still, but... At least it's not getting in the way of their work. So, anything you're curious about? Um... Are these your work clothes, why not? Oh, yes. Do you like them? Yeah, they look pretty good. They look very nice. But, uh, your hair's still a bit loose, don't you think? <laughs> ah, yes. You're not the first to say that. But it's hard to control it at all. No, sorry, it's hard to control it at all. But I can't bear to cut it. No worries, though. I assure you, I haven't had an accident since. An accident since when? And if you do... Oh, sorry, and if I do... Then you can just tell me you told me so. Uh... It is a bit of a wooden area. Are you not concerned it's a fire hazard? Oh, you think so? Yes, I'd prefer to keep things a little more natural out here. It takes a bit longer, but it's more than worth it in the end. Better for the environment as well. Uh, yeah, how are the new tools? Extravagantly so. I think that's because I had you helping me that day. Are you secretly a good luck charm? I feel more like the opposite, if I'm honest. Oh, come now. Don't say that. You haven't let me down yet. I mean, to be fair, I don't see why Mary would be considered a bad luck charm. You always here alone? Oh, not always. Okay, just about always. But it's alright. I don't mind it. I get to meet people... I get to meet up with some people, uh, some others when they need bases and all. So, I'm not always, always alone. 
So don't worry about it. Uh, besides... Are you any... Are any of us ever really alone? You winked at me after saying that. Uh... Is that your work in the back? Maybe it is. It's just the base right now, though. Nothing too special, uh, but about it yet. I think it looks pretty good, though. Especially since it's not like how... It's not like I know how to do any of that stuff. Well, if you'd like, you could take a step inside. You can, be my, you can be my little tester. And then we get buried alive. Whoa, really? Sure, I mean, have you always wanted to, uh, to know what it's like to be actually lying one? I know I have. I mean, it looks tiny compared to you, Reginald. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like to try it if it's okay. Of course it is. I wouldn't have offered it otherwise. I stepped into the coffin. Even though if, even though it was still standing upward, I crossed my arms as if I was lying down in it. Reginald gave me a teensy wave as he lifted the lid and placed it over the coffin, encompassing me in darkness inside. How's it feeling there? It's cozy. I think. I, it looks like it's just purely made of wood. I wouldn't call that cozy. I'm sure it'll be a lot cozier once it's finished. Maybe you'll add some nice cushions and shiny down a shiny finish. To put really over the top. Ah, uh, yeah. I always did wonder what it's like uh, in... What it feels like in those. I guess you'll have to let me try it uh, when it's finished. Hello? Reginald? You're still there, right? Hello? Uh, I guess I'll just let myself out then. Huh? I pushed the lid in front of me, and it wouldn't budge at all. I pushed harder, but to no avail. Reginald, can you hear me? I'd like to get out now. Hey, how much air is in, in here anyway? I mean, it's completely made of wood. I wouldn't call it... Uh, I wouldn't call it airtight, right? I tried to push again. No use. And I don't know how much I yelled at, uh, out to him. It seemed like Reginald had just vanished. Hey, let me out, please. I punched the lid and attempted to get it out. I felt pain surge through my wrist as I did so. But still, I did it again, and again, and again. Help me, please. Let me out. Let me out, please. Can't get out, please. Finally, I was let out. I struggled to catch my breath as I let, as I met my face with Reginald's. She looked quite sho uh, shocked uh, to see me in such a state. Mary? What happened? Are you alright? Did... Where did you go? Did you hear me screaming in there? No, oh, uh, someone had knocked on the door. Uh, wouldn't you have said something? You could have said... Hold on, Mary. It, like, well, actually, hold on. Yeah, you could have let us out first, and then answered the door. You could answer the door, then send her all, hold on, and then let us out. I figured you'd be able to get out on your own, so I... You look shaken. Just a little bit. I just got so nervous when I couldn't get out. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm the sorry one. Really, I am. I'm so, so sorry. Today was supposed to be a nice, but I... I shouldn't have left you on your own. I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you, okay? You really don't have to. It's all right. I feel bad. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault. Besides, I won't feel good about it unless I do something to make it up to you, okay? It's just how I am. I stayed about uh, less than half an hour. I stayed in about less than an hour after that. It became pretty, pretty awkward after my little panic, and Reginald still looked like he felt, felt really bad. I told him I'd let him work in peace. He told me it was okay if I wanted to leave, but he'd like to see me again soon. We said our goodbyes and I left, not wanting him to feel any worse over it. I didn't, well, I didn't do much in the, uh, for the rest of the day. I had, well, 
planned around this. But no, I didn't feel up for any, uh, doing much at all. I went back home and decided just to relax. I was sure that once I fu it was fully calm, what happened today wouldn't seem as bad as it did at all. So I spent the rest of the day, the rest of my evening at home, until it was time to go to bed once again. I got something to ask you again. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I wanted to ask you something. You just did. What? No. Something different. Go ahead. Are you trapped? What do you mean by that? What are you doing right now? Is it because you want to? Or is it yeah, because you have no choice? There's always a choice. Even if that choice is to do nothing. But the choice I uh, made was with the best intention in mind. Good night, Mary. So you did something you know people didn't like. Cool. I went to bed after that. I don't know if it's becoming easier to sleep at night with a. If I don't know if it's becoming easier to sleep at night, was a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. The question. Regardless, I slept. The days following were mostly uneventful, but I think that's probably a good thing. I didn't need something to shake things up even more. The first two days that passed, I, I did my usual hobbies. I went to the cemetery, placed flowers, planted flowers, didn't really talk to anyone. But that was fine too. On the third day it was raining, so I decided to stay home. I decided to finally take out a manga that I got from the library. I hadn't started it yet, and today seemed like a perfect day too. I lit the fireplace and cuddled up. Uh, by the uh, with the blanket next to it, expecting to spend qu quite a while sitting there. It was a thick book, but I was sure I could finish it. Uh, finish it in, in, in a sitting. I mean, I know. Well, it is manga, so maybe. As for its contents, well, it wasn't the best manga I ever read, but it was still really interesting and captivated me nonetheless. The story was mostly light-hearted, and at some points made me feel... even felt like a comedy. Um, but I just got into the part where it was a bit more serious, making me all the more invested. Is that supposed to be... Looks like anime version Crowen. The main boy was hopelessly in love with the main girl. That was obvious enough from the start. Despite this, he didn't want to be her boyfriend. In fact, he didn't want uh, to be in a relationship with her at all. The man created pretty comfortably comedic up to that point. It was mostly about the boy uh, taking wild steps to keep the girl, the girl his friend, but also not wanting to evolve into more. Uh, or even insinuate he had feelings for her. He never explained why he doesn't want to date her, just that he doesn't. But now it appears that the girl has grown feelings for him in return, making things all the more complicated. And it looks like the boy was ready to confess why they felt the way he did. I was completely, completely immersed as I turned the page, only to be met with Crowen. Oh, as you can see, guess who? Look, feathers. Oh, how terrible. Someone has vandalized the pages. Uh, with some sort of black paint or nail polish, it seems. Oh, okay. I tried to then, uh, turn to the next page just to make sure the rest of the book was alright. Sure enough, the other pages were also scribbled in black. Except for one. It was a drawing. Yeah, there was a drawing on it. It looked like some kind of writing underneath. It made me feel disappointed. I know it's not all that uncommon for edgy teenagers to write in books and all, but but still, this belongs to the library. You shouldn't damage it. I tried to look at the bright sides and think that maybe it was a donation to the library, to the library instead. Someone had drawn on this book while they owned it and donated it without realizing it. Still, though, did no one check to see if the book was good enough in a good enough shape to be donated? Well, even then, did the library not check to see it was good enough, um, in a good enough state to receive it? Uh, 
I made a mental note to tell the library the book is damaged uh, when I next, and I flipped to the back through the beginning of the pages uh, to make sure I didn't miss any of the mocks. But when I did, that is not expected. Huh? The page I was just not look like it did, but so we're asleep. All the characters. It was like they were looking straight at me. I turned the page and it was the same. All the eyes were on me. Completely startled, I thrown the book away from me. But I didn't see where I was throwing it. Oh, in the fire. In my panic, I thrown the book into the fire. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. I wanted to save it, but it was too late. Putting the fire out wouldn't have saved it. It was always pitch black and burning to ash. I smacked myself in the head. I was always so careful with the library books, and now I just let one get completely destroyed. But you also burned whatever mocking that was that suddenly just turned the pages against you. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Ah. Even though the book was beyond rescue, I still had to clean up the fireplace now. I sighed and gathered up the proper tools to clean it. Kneeling in front of the fireplace, I heard my phone go off. I picked it up shortly after. Worried that it might have been Croven needing something important. But it was Reginald once again. Hello, Mary. How are you feeling today? Me? I'm okay, I guess. Are you sure? I still feel terrible at what happened the other day. What do you mean? When you got stuck, remember? Oh well, perhaps it's better if you don't remember. Well anyway, I've been feeling pretty awful about that, and I was thinking of ways I could make it up to you somehow. And luckily, an opportunity has recently presented itself. Oh, you don't have to do anything. Really, it's alright. I think you'll really like it. Uh... Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. In fact, I'd say it was meant to be. It's, your perfect, it's perfect for you, after all. You see, I was recently invited to a funeral. And who better to invite me than you? I invite with me. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you feeling alright? Oh yes, no need to worry. There's no one close. Just someone I used to know a long, long time ago. I hadn't seen him in ages, so it surprised me when, that I was invited. But since I was, I thought you would like to come with. Hey, uh, you would like to come. You do like these events, right? Well, I guess I can't deny that I do. But are you really sure it's okay for me to come? Of course. I think if anyone can put a a fun the fun in funeral, it's you. Ah, oh, shucks. Well, not necessarily put the fun in funeral, but... You know, make it less painful, I guess. Reginald forward, afforded me the details of the funeral and told me where to uh, be meeting him. Despite our area at the cemetery, the funeral was going to be entirely in, in a church. I had never been in a funeral at a church before. Each one I've attended had been outside, and it's a lot easier to walk into one that's been held outdoors. Now that I was invited, I could not deny. I did feel like a little excited. Is that bad? Is this the first time you've been actually invited into a funeral? I've never really gone to churches, but they've always seemed pretty fun from the outside. Oh, they all seem so pretty from the outside. I just never had a reason to go, and now I. But now I do. I kept in touch with Reginald until that day. Always double checking the details, uh, such as the time and location. I didn't want to be late or hold anything up, or cause any disruption. Uh, Reginald kept assuring me that it would be all right, though, and that he'd wait for me outside, so. I wouldn't get a lot too lost either. On the day of the funeral, I wore my usual attire. It's one of the greatest things about uh, dressing like this. It's all, it's always funeral already. I mean, it's, it's I guess it's not the only reason I dress like this. I just like the color black a lot. I guess, uh, but I think red is still my favorite color. Probably. 
When I turned down uh, the street, the church was on, I spotted Reginald standing in front of the steps. He spotted me in return and gave me a polite wave as he waited for me to reach him. That's a nice sort of suit, I guess. Why don't you look nice? Oh, really? I'm just wearing what I always do. Yes, I know. But it's a nice look for you. Right, right. Here, take this. Reginald handed me a small package of tissues. I know you're not one to cry at these events, but just in case. Oh, thank you. It's very considerate of you. Do you think you'll need them too? Oh, no, no. I'm not much of a cryer, I'm afraid. Besides, I think it's hard to see to be sad with you around. Reginald opened up the door uh, for me and I stepped inside. I'd always admired the buildings from the outside, but never been inside before. The ceilings tower towered above me, or above us. The walls were clean and dark, and the tower floor below us gave us a pleasant sound as we stepped on. Uh, he gestured the direction we'd be heading in for the service. There were a lot of people that made me happy. We all huddled into, into the room, everyone looking for a proper pew to sit on, which was nice enough for you to the priest. I sat down, uh, closest, uh, the closest one, to, huh? the closest open spot to me, and almost immediately I felt overwhelmed with a sense of a dread. I'm not sure about what, uh, what caused it or why it was happening, but it was as if the world was ending somehow. I don't know. I just couldn't place this overwhelming sense of doom that I was feeling. I looked around. It seemed like no one else was expecting it. But it was so prominent to me, almost tangible. Like a heavy light, a heavy weight was shrinking onto my shoulders. Or loud music was reverberating through my bones. Are we not sitting next to Reginald? The ceiling was so high, and I was pretty. I had plenty of room to sit. And yet I felt so terribly claustrophobic. I couldn't even hear what the priest was saying, or rather, I could hear it, but it felt like I could, I could not listen properly, as if they were speaking underwater. What was this feeling? It was making me feel sick. I felt the temples of my head start to throb. The more time went on, each muffled noise it was that coerced its way in the, to the room. Someone gave me a sense of nausea, as if just the vibration, uh, vibrations of the sound was causing me to feel dizzy. Something wasn't right. That's all I could think to myself. I felt almost paralysed in my seat, as the bad feelings continued so, and so on and so forth. It was hard to describe exactly how I felt, or how it felt. Was this a stroke? A heart attack? I couldn't pinpoint the feeling. I just knew that something wasn't right. I wasn't even sure how to handle these feelings. It was like, it was as if I ended some kind of dreamlike state. As if what I was feeling and everything around me, it was all some sort of elaborate dream. It was scary and claustrophobic, again. Uh, I felt like I had tunnel vision and the world around me becoming blurred. I mean, kind of. Oh, I see, it's actually blowing, okay. All the noises around me it felt so muffled and yet so loud. It, m it made my ears ring. And all the while, the only message my brain was feeding me was that something wasn't right. I... I didn't want to be disrespectful to the service or anything. But I had to leave. At least just leave the room. How long had this gone on, anyways? It felt like it had been for hours, but that couldn't have been the case. I think I was just feeling really sick, and that's why I ran. I eventually worked up the strength to exit the room. Things didn't seem quite so closed in when I did. But it still felt tidal waves of nausea rush over me every few moments. I couldn't understand what was causing this to happen. It felt terrible. In my uh, dizzied state, I stumbled out of the room until I found a bathroom. I went inside. The lights were bright and fluorescent, in contrast with the rest of the church. The buzzing noise of the stark whiteness of the room didn't help my condition at all, as if overwhelming my senses even more. 
Luckily, I was already in front of the toilet. When my sickness got the better of me, I threw up. And something, something definitely was not right. Did you throw... Whatever I puked out into the toilet was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. So this is because of the symbol in the book. It was pure black. And it glistened oddly in the light. Like ink or tar. Did this really come from me just now? Or am I seeing things? The feeling of nausea still hasn't left. I knock on the door. I must give much time to inspect it further. But truthfully, I didn't know if I wanted to. I had just... I had just seen things, right? I told whatever, uh, whoever was outside that it was just be a minute. I flushed the toilet and wiped the seat to the toilet paper. All the murky, black, uh, murky, inky black water came up clear again after I flushed it. I washed my hands and cleaned myself and just in the sink before heading back outside again. As I exited the bathroom, I was greeted by the lady and gentleman standing in front of me. Oh, goodness, you startled me. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I apologize for the wait. Please go ahead. Well, that's quite alright. I just wanted to fix my makeup before we head out for dinner. Will you be joining us too? Huh? We saw you in the service there with us. Everyone was invited to join us for dinner after all. Oh, uh, join us for dinner after. Sorry for appearing rude, but who are you anyways? You're not some kind of crasher, are you? Huh? What do you mean? How do you relate to the deceased? Uh, I would just say I was a plus one, right? Can you say you're a plus one? Who did you come with? Oh, that. That's the... Uh, I'm actually just... Reginald, really? Why um... I'm, well, the only option that cl is the closest to the truth would be saying well, I'm with Reginald. I'm my cousin Trill leaving in the middle of, of it. I just wasn't feeling too great, so I took off my own. Uh, I didn't know where he is right now, but I'll be seeing him again soon, I'm sure. Oh, I see. You must be finding a wonder, but uh, about this at all, then. Sorry to bother you. No, don't worry. Sorry. It's okay. I noticed them give me a weird look and went on their separate ways. As I got closer to the mall, I could see more and more people spilling it out of the ends. Uh, it seems like the service is just about over, but... I could just leave. There's something really uh, weird going on here, and I knew it was connected to that coffin. The closer I got to it, the more intense that nauseating pressure felt. It felt like walls closing in on my brain. And what ha happened in the bathroom earlier, I couldn't just let it go. I snuck closer to the coffin. We were alone together, and the pressure felt more intense than ever. Honestly, I feel like I appeared again just standing here. It just felt so hard to focus on anything except the pressure of it all. Something was telling me what's inside. I don't know if it's a body. I could hardly think properly, but all my brain could tell me was that something else was in there. No one else is around, right? Maybe. If I could just see inside. All I need is one quick glance, and then maybe we could. My, uh, my mind will be at ease. I reached my arms towards the coffin, and... Ah, there you are. Reginald, did you get lost? I noticed you ran off earlier. Is everything alright? Oh, I, um... Actually, I'm not alright. Oh, what's wrong? I don't know. I just started feeling really sick today. And I'm all woozy and dizzy. And my head feels like throbbing. I don't know why. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. Would you like me to drive you home? Uh, that. No, it's okay. You sure? Are you gonna get home then? No, no, it's fine. I'll be fine. Absolutely, because... You don't sound like a... Uh, that, okay? Uh, I think... I think it's just I need to lie down somewhere. Could you help me to the bus stop? The bus stop? You sure? Yeah. Once I'm on the bus, I'll be... Mary, you, you really don't seem alright. Would you like to come to my place instead? 
Oh, really? Last time I was somewhere with you, I uh, got stuck. Is that all right? Absolutely. I I worry about finding your way home like this. If if you're sure, I have a phone. I can I can phone a friend. Reginald and I quickly and quietly exited the, the church together. Even though we were getting further from the coffin, the immense pressure of, uh, I felt from standing next to it didn't seem to fade any. In fact, it almost seemed to be getting worse, regardless of my distance from it. It felt bad and a little weird. And about getting uh, Reginald's place like this. But it seemed like it was my only choice. But it's fine. I had my phone on me, too, if I needed. In any ca in the case of emergency, I just... I really needed to lie down somewhere. Not necessarily sleep, but to lie down. I crawled into Reginald's car with him. It smelled like one of those... Uh, old pine air fresheners. But it, it wasn't anything hanging on the uh, rear mirror. It's starting to rain outside. It's starting to rain pretty heavily. But with that, I think I'll call it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, little mysterious sort of, uh, I guess, episode or something. Um, hopefully I can see you in the next one. With that, goodbye.